at the end of today's lecture. All right, so first, a little bit of review. So the orbital combinations uh, that are allowed are the sigma and pi type combinations. So sigma type combinations involve head-on overlap between two orbitals, right? So we can see in this example, the two p orbitals that I've drawn here are overlapping head-on. They're coming directly at one another. And as a result, we have what's called sigma type overlap. And let's say that combining these orbitals, <clears throat> excuse me, combining these orbitals leads us to one bonding and one anti-bonding orbital with that energy difference between them right there. Pi type overlap is similar except the two orbitals are side on. So this is another example of an allowed combination, but the orbitals aren't pointing directly at one another. Instead, they're parallel to one another as they come towards each other. There is still an interaction there, and it is still favorable in the sense that the bonding orbital is lowered in energy, but it's not quite as extreme as sigma type overlap. So what we would see is the splitting between the bonding and anti-bonding orbitals for pi type overlap is less than the splitting we observe for sigma type overlap. Remember, we label these orbitals with either pi or sigma, depending on the type of overlap involved. Finally, we looked at disallowed combinations, which are involved when there's equal parts constructive and destructive overlap as two orbitals combine. So disallowed combinations apply when, for instance, we bring a 2s orbital close to either a 2py or a 2pz. So both of these are perpendicular to the inner nuclear axis, which would be this axis here. As a result, there's equal parts constructive, which is this interaction of this top lobe with the 2s orbital, and destructive, which is the bottom lobe of the 2p orbital with the 2s orbital, overlap as we bring those two together. And so this is a disallowed combination, and we would see no interaction whatsoever because there's no energy incentive for that interaction two types of interactions, both of which are allowed, constructive and destructive. So if we add two orbitals together, we take a 2p plus a 2p, we'll get constructive overlap as shown here, and the resulting orbital will have more electron density in, the, in between the nuclei than the starting orbitals separated. On the other hand, if we bring two orbitals of opposite phase towards each other, so here we have a dark phase and a light phase coming together, in an instance of a 2p minus 2p combination, what we would see is depleted electron density between the nuclei, like so. And this is an example of a destructive or anti-bonding combination. Again, destructive and constructive overlap are both allowed, but the trick is destructive overlap destabilizes the resulting MO. So, for instance, destructive overlap is at work in the, this antibonding orbital here and this one as well, whereas constructive overlap is at work in the bonding orbitals and serves to stabilize those orbitals relative to the separated combinations. So, armed with these allowed and disallowed combinations and these ideas, 